Hey, what is up, everybody? So Apple recently uh, announced, or actually this article mentioned, this article right here mentioned that Apple is considering starting a subscription service for podcasting. I thought this was inevitable. It was going to happen eventually because people, that's the number one problem people have. I talk to podcasters all day. How do I make money from my podcast? So I'll talk about the goods and the bads about that. Overall, I think it's a positive. And I'll talk about what you can do once they implement this, you know, how to take advantage of it. Because if we look at other countries that already do this, China, their podcast industry is about 25 times more valuable than in America. They do like, there's an article from 2018 that they did. It's like worth over 8 billion a year. And I'll just kind of go through some stats of, you know, what people are doing in China to make money with their podcast. They even said that people can make up to 8 million with an audience of 250,000, which is crazy. We'll talk about like some, some learnings from, from what they're doing. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Like, comment, subscribe. You know what the deal is. And uh, let's hop into it. So the reason why I thought this was inevitable is because I've talked to hundreds, thousands of podcasters, and this is always the number one thing that they want is how do I make money from my podcast? And it's funny that they ask that because podcast isn't made to make money. It's made to make content. If you want to make money, make a business and then have a podcast support that business. It's two separate entities. Businesses function for making money. Podcasts function for consumption, for content, for entertainment. It's almost like it's a product on its own. Um, and that's kind of because in America, you know, you might be listening from other parts of the world. It might be like this, may, may not. But, you know, content, no one pays for content unless there's a, a process attached and a result attached to that content. Otherwise, people are used to getting it for free. You know, I've learned so much from just YouTube, from just Google. And the smart ones and the majority of people are not going to pay for content unless it becomes normalized like it is in China. So if we look at this article, this was written in 2018. So take that with a grain of salt, um, but it's still, you know, relevant, you know, obviously now I think America's caught up a little bit in the ad industry, but China's podcast industry is worth 7.3 billion, uh, 23 times larger than America. And just for comparison, Serial, the number one podcast made about 500k its fourth year, its first year with 90 million downloads. Um, that's because in America, most podcasts are monetizing by ads. Uh, while that's not the best way to monetize, it's usually direct from consumer. Um, you know, a three dollar subscription with, uh, let's say you have two hundred fifty k subscribers. Like, do the math. That's a lot of money. And in this example here, uh, this Chinese podcast called "How to Make Your Voice More Attractive" uh, has two hundred eighteen thousand subscribers, paying three dollars a month. Do the math. That comes out to $7.8 million a year. It's a lot in taxes you got to pay. I don't know in China how taxes work, uh, but it's still a lot of money to pocket, you know, just for creating content that, you know, a lot of people in America are probably making the same type of content. They just have, people are just used to, to paying money for content, you know, and these type of podcasts do really well. Anything that's educational or study-based because people are going to keep listening to it and coming back to it. I, I see America trending towards China as far as what the podcast industry is doing. and almost like mixing Patreon, the, the purpose of Patreon into podcast. Now, I think it's awesome that Apple does this ASAP just because Spotify has been spanking Apple in the booty when it comes to growing the space, growing the industry. I mean, just the last year alone, Spotify invested 800 million just gobbling up companies and talent. Joe Rogan, the Obamas, Prince Charles, one of the, whatever the prince is over there. So many, I think Kim Kardashian as well, and some TikTok stars just hiring talent. And if Apple releases a premium service, subscription service, you betcha that Spotify is going to do the same thing. They're not dumb. They're going to release one as well. So that means there's more people having, but what's, what that's going to do also is it's going to make, there's going to be divisiveness because you're not going to subscribe, or maybe you could subscribe to a show on different platforms. May, we'll, we'll see how they build it out because it would suck if a lot of shows are only on Spotify or only on Apple. I think it would just divide the discoverability of podcasts out a lot. So so why I think it could possibly flop? I don't think it, it, would, it could flop. I mean, I don't see them stopping something like that if they start it like quick. But if we look at other apps like Luminary um, and some other ones that have already gotten a lot of venture capital and they're based off of shows where you pay to subscribe or they feature a lot of shows that you subscribe for, They've been flopping, you know, I don't, does anyone here use Luminary? If you do, let me know. I don't know who uses it. I downloaded it once and I'm, it's just dumb. Like it's almost like Google Maps or YouTube. Like you just want to go to one place 
to get all of your content. You don't want to subscribe to different apps for different type of content. It creates friction, like I was saying before. But then again, Luminary didn't have the distribution. And in business, when you're trying to get users or you're trying to sell and you know, you want to go that to the place that has the most distribution. So if Apple was to do it or Spotify, I think it would have legs and it would have success. And then people would figure out how to make it successful, how to give more value, how to position things. If they do do that, I, I'm sure as heck hope they just update the UI and the customability of you know your podcast and your show. You know, having you be able, be able to feature things, you know, maybe link out to more things to make it almost like a profile for yourself. But Apple doesn't do anything, so that's just dreams and wishes. But that being said, I think it, it'll be really good for podcasts to stick around to make better content if they do do this, because most people they need to make money from their show to continue. You know, it takes time and effort to produce. And a lot of people aren't making money because they think that, you know, they're going to be the next, you know, call her daddy where they're just going to, you know, blow up out of nowhere for no reason. People are just going to find their show without having kind of any marketing plan, any strategy to grow their show or, you know, collaborating with the right people, et cetera. It's rare, you know, for your show to kind of blow up like that and, and a company to buy you out and then give you a lot of distribution. You have to build it on your own. And usually that involves picking your poison, figuring out the place you want to grow that's outside of a podcast, and then driving that traffic to the podcast. Uh, Podcasts don't have that much discoverability. And it's a hard ask to get someone to listen to your podcast if they don't know who you are. So that's overall, that's my opinions about Apple. I think I have a lot of opinions about Apple we're not going to get into. But uh, I actually use Google Podcasts. I don't have an iPhone. I have an Android. Curious to know if you use an iPhone or Android, let me know below. Having the only negative about having an Android right now is that I can't use Clubhouse and that's, you know, popping right now, but eventually they'll add it. So appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you like this, subscribe, review the whole nine and reach out to me. So peace out guys.